Hello, this is uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad, and this is another video uh, regarding design of steel uh, structures according to AISC. And I'm going to talk today about the tension members, uh, also uh, uh, going to be part two uh, for examples on tensile strength. So in this video, I'm going to uh, uh, handle three different examples. Uh, related to the tension members. One is steel plate example, the second is single angle example, and the third is double angle example. Okay, uh, I hope that before watching this video, I hope that you uh, visit the previous video directly because it explains what we are going to do in these examples and uh, regarding the design uh, based on LRFD and ASD. So please visit the previous video before watching this video. Okay, now let's go to the first example that we are going to explain today. So in our example, we are having a half by five plate, half inch by five inch plate of A36 steel. So again, this is the dimensions of the plate that is uh, being used. So as you can see, we have a plate here and this plate, it is the dimension is 0.5 or half by 5 so the width is 5 inches and the thickness is half an inch okay and the type or the material of this plate is a36 as we know a36 of yield 36 ksi and you can find the properties from the table 2-3 uh, that we already explained in the last video is used as a tension member so it is going to be used as a tension member it is connected to a gusset plate with four five eighths inch diameter bolts as shown in the figure so this is a gusset plate as you can see this is the gusset plate and this gusset plate is connected to the main tension member using four different bolts the bolts are five eighths inch diameter bolts okay and this is the dimension of it which is as we said five this is the width of the holes it is going to be five eighth inch plus tolerance which is one eighth inch then the total hole diameter is going to be three quarters inch okay three quarters in inch okay assume that the effective net area a effective equals to the actual net area so we're going to say that a effective is going to equal is going to equal the a n which is net area it is only assumption in this example but later on we're going to see that we need to calculate a e because maybe it is equal to a n or maybe it is smaller than it but for the time being for this example we are going to use uh, them as the same they are going to be the same so what we want to uh, obtain here, what is the design strength for LRFD and what is the allowable strength for ASD <clears throat> for this tension member? Okay, now let's go to the steps of design uh, or the steps of the solution. First of all, <clears throat> we have two types of mode failures that we have said and mentioned before. First of all, we need to check yielding of the gross section so this is maybe number one okay or a and we need to check the fracture of the net section so we are having the second mode failure which is fraction of mode uh, fracture uh, mode failure which is related to the net section fracture happening is happening for the net section yielding is happening uh, for occurring for the gross section as we have explained last time okay so based on this we are going to calculate the nominal strength based on the yield of gross section and we are going to calculate the nominal strength based on the net section okay whether it is yielding of gross section or fracture of net section so for the yielding of the gross section we need to know the gross area first because our nominal strength as we have explained before our nominal strength for based on the gross area it equals to f yield times area gross 
However, for the fracture of the nut area, it equals to F ultimate times area effective, right? So in this case, we are going to calculate in order to get first the first mode failure or the limit state, which is excessive deformation based on yielding of gross section. Then we need to obtain the area gross. So area gross going to be five times half because already we have the plate. It is uh, five times half, which is the width and the thickness. So our area gross is going to be two and a half inch uh, squared two and a half inch squared and the nominal strength is in this case based on our equation it is going to be f yield times area gross so our nominal strength and stands for nominal f yield times area gross so it is the yield strength times area gross from where we can get this f yield from table 2-3 as we have mentioned last video it is 36 ksi and area gross already we have obtained it from the previous step then by uh, multiplication, we can obtain the nominal strength based on yielding of gross section, which is 90 kips. Okay, 90 uh, kips. For the other mode failure, that is, or the limit state that we can check or we need to check is fracture of the net section. So we have fracture of net section. So the fracture here is based on area effective which in our case it is going to be equal to area net and F ultimate which is the ultimate strength of our <clears throat> of our material of our section okay so here a n is going to equal area gross minus the area of the holes area gross already we have obtained it before 2.5 2.5 inch squared and the area of the hole it equals to half which is the thickness okay we are dealing with this we want to get the area for each one year so it is going to be the width which is half time three quarters which is the uh, like the uh, height of this hole okay or the diameter of the hole and times two holes because we have two holes one here and one here so we are multiplying by two when we calculate this, we're going to obtain 1.75 inches squared. So this means that the net area is less than the gross area. Okay, this is 1.75. However, this is 2.5 inches squared. Okay, so in this case, our effective area equal to AN based on the example equals to 1.75 inches square. This is true for this example only, but AE does not always equal to AN. Okay, we need to keep this in our mind. The nominal strength is going to be for the fracture is if ultimate times AE 58 from where this 58 from the table as I said table 2-3 and the manual you can refer to the previous video times area effective already we have obtained 1.75 this gives us 101.5 kips okay so this means that we have the nominal strength here based on yielding of the gross section we have the nominal strength here based on the fracture of the net area seemingly this is less 90 and here this is 101 okay so we might decide directly and say hey in this case 90 is going to be less so we can use uh, or we can say that the yielding of the gross section is going to be used for our design but actually we should remember that we need to multiply by the resistance factor so the resistance factor for the uh, yielding it is 0.9 if you remember we take the minimum of 0.9 yielding of gross section or 0.75 fracture of the net or effective section net uh, area or net section so again this 0.9 needs to be involved here and 0.75 needs to be involved here this means that the design strength based on yielding is going to be 0.9 the resistance factor times 90 which is giving us 81 kips however the design strength based on fracture it is going to be 0.75 times 101.5 it gives us 76.1 kips so based on this we can say that the design strength for LRFD is the smaller value, which is 
here, which is the fracture. What is the meaning of this? This is phi t p n equal to 76. What is the meaning of this? <clears throat> what is the meaning that the design strength is based on frac uh, fracture <clears throat> and it is 76.1? What is the significance of this? <clears throat> the significance is that the cross section, the whole cross section, is not going to yield in this case and there is no excessive deformation. However, at the end, at the end, at the four, uh, four holes here, the fracture at this, uh, at this net section is going to be expected. We are expecting the failure mode to be like this, to be fracture at the net section. This means that our, our failure mode is brittle failure, not ductile failure. Okay, and it means that if I have a loading, <clears throat> if I have loading, for example, that is going to, if I'm going to apply loading, this loading, if it is going to reach 76.1, this means that this section is going to fracture at the net area. So if it's like, for example, 50, it is okay, it will not fracture, nothing will happen. But if it reaches 76.1, then the fracture will happen here, will take place here. Okay, so this is the meaning of the design strengths for LRFD is based on fracture rather than yielding. Okay, now <clears throat> let's go to the ASD, so the allowable stress design. The allowable strength based on yielding also we have based on yielding and based on fracture as we have studied last time and based on yielding we need to have pn over safety factor here which is 0.1.67 so f yield times area gross as we have said before and it equals to 0.6 f yield area gross however for the uh, fracture it is pn over uh, another safety factor which is two here and as we said, it is F ultimate times AE, and it equals 2.5 F ultimate area effective. So in this case, we are going to calculate the first equation here, which is yielding of the gross section. So we have 90. From where this 90 we got it? It is the nominal strength here that already we have obtained it, right? So we said that we were discussing here about LRFD. Actually, nominal strength has nothing to do with it that you are doing it or calculating it. Okay, whether for uh, ASD or LRFD, because again, this is the this is the nominal strength <clears throat> based on the uh, yielding. So it is based on the gross section. Okay, so in this case, 90 is going to be used in the safety factor 1.67. So we have 53.9 kips. Now let's go and get the allowable strength based on fracture. So we need to calculate the nominal strength based on the net area right so we found it 101 right so when we use the safety factor associated with fracture which is 2 as we said and we and we give the rationale why this is 1.67 and why this is 2 this is fracture brit brittle failure so we are uh, in front of a serious nature of, uh, of phenomenon or brittle failure, which is fracture. Here, it is, it is less serious than fracture. It is ductile failure. So we are using less safety factor here. So this two represents the importance of the fracture based on uh, or importance of the serious nature of the fracture failure mode. So we have 50 here, okay, 0.8 caps. 53.9 and 50.8. What is the meaning? What is the significance of these two numbers? The significance is, based on ASD, the cross section before reaching the yield of the gross section, it would fracture at the net area. Okay, So before having excessive deformation for or before the gross section is going to reach yielding, the net area at the connection is going to fracture. That's the meaning of it. So whenever we say the allowable surface load is smaller than uh, the smaller value from both this one and this one, then we are having 50.8 kips as our 
service load allowable service load okay you understand now okay let's go to <clears throat> another way which is we call it alternative solution using allowable stress for uh, yielding so uh, I have mentioned this uh, before also that we have this equation we can use like the stress directly like 0.6 the uh, the allowable stress and 0.5 uh, the ultimate here this is our allowable stress here 0.6 if field and 0.5 if ultimate this is the allowable regardless of the area here so we are going to calculate it based on this so we are going to say that for yielding we are going to use what we call it the allowable stress 0.6 if field and for fracture we are going to use uh, 0.5 if ultimate so this is for yielding and here this is for fracture so the limit is going to be the allowable stress limit is going to be 0.6 times a field this is from the table as we said 21.6 21.6 and here and the allowable load is going to be ft times area gross ft which is 21.6 times the area gross already we have obtained it the uh, previously then it is going to be 54.5 uh, sorry point uh, 54.0 kips okay so this is the uh, uh, the allowable stress based on yielding the slight difference between sorry for this I need to drink so the slight difference between <clears throat> this value and the one based on allowable strength is because the value of Omega in the allowable strength approach has been rounded from 5 over 3 to 1.67 so there is a, a round we are rounding the the number here so the value based on the allowable stress is more accurate actually okay this is only like fraction so it doesn't give much difference here okay so we are using like this um, this point six a field at the allowable for us for fracture we are going to find that ft equal to 0.5 if ultimate so 0.5 times 58 this is from the table 2-3 and ft is going to be 29.5 k 29.0 ksi i don't know why i'm making mistake with the zero here but anyway and the allowable load is going to be ft times a effective this ft is 29 ksi times area effective already we have obtained previously <clears throat> in our case based on this we are going to take the lowest one which is going to be 50.8 because we have here 54 and here it is only 50.8 we take the the lower value okay so uh, here as you said again the same philosophy that the fracture of the element is going to take place not yielding or excessive deformation of the gross section okay the point is if you go back and compare this 50 okay which is here also it is 50 compared to this one it was the controlling one the controlling for lrfd it was 76.1 here it was 50 if you 76.1 over 50.8 you're going to find it it gives you almost 1.5 do you remember this 1.5 that i have mentioned many times before that is the relation between the resistance factor and omega actually yes i have mentioned about this before that the safety factor used in asd equals to 1.5 over the resistance factor for lrfd Okay, so you are going to find that because of the relationship given by this equation that I have mentioned it in previous video, the allowable strength will always be equal to the design strength divided by 1.5. That's very true. In our case, we found it true. So here it was 76 for LRFD. Here it is 50. The relation is 1.5. If you compare the two results together <clears throat> okay okay now let's go to the second example so uh, in summary for this example in summary if we go back here 
we are expecting that the failure is going to take place here for example fracture of the area fracture would take place here at the net area at this plane there is no excessive deformation for the gross section so we are expecting the problem here to happen here okay now let's jump into the second example which is giving us a single angle tension member so we are having <clears throat> gusset plate and it is connecting a tension member this tension member is an angle which is L uh, three and a half by three and a half times three eighths and it is single angle as you can see this is the the gusset plate this is the the bolt and this is the angle okay a single angle tension member as we said it is uh, l three and a half times three and a half this is equal angle with the length three and a half inches by the thickness of both of them three eighths is connected to a gusset plate with 7 8 inch diameter bolts as shown in the figure so here this is the diameter here of these bolts um, is 7 8 inches and a 36 steel is used so we are using a 36 okay so which is a feel 36 if ultimate 50 and the service loads are 35 kips did load and live load is 15 kips live load so did load is 35 and live load is 15 investigate this member for compliance with the AISC specification assume that the effective net area is 85 percent of the computed net area as we are going to see here it is giving us a value that a e is going to be like 0.85 of area net we need to use this in our calculations okay <clears throat> So we need to use LRFD and we need to use ASD. Okay, we want to obtain the investigate the member compliance for AC AISC specification. Okay, now let's go to the solution. First, compute the nominal strength, which is uh, related to uh, the nominal strength, which is related to the yielding and then related to fracture so first we want to get the gross section of this single angle so we need to jump into the manual and go to this table 1-7 angles properties you are going to find it in this uh, page and if you like browse and go down the table you are going to find that l three and half by three and half by three eighths is here and you are going to find that the area is 2.48 which already we have rounded it to be 2.5 inch squared okay this is from part one of the manual and you can refer to the parts of the manual from uh, the previous video okay and then pn the nominal strength is going to be a field times area gross 36 from table 2-3 2.5 from this table equals to 90 kips Okay, so this is based on the gross section. Now we are going to calculate based on the net section. The net section is going equal to the gross area minus the holes area. So we have the 3 over 8, which is the thickness, and then the diameter is going to be 7 8 inch of the, of the bolt and 1 8 tolerance. So if you calculate this, we are going to obtain 2.125 inch squared area effective based on the example it is 0.85 an okay it is given already so it is it has been given for us in the example so this means that we are going to multiply 0.85 times 2.125 in this example and it gives us 1.8 inches squared the nominal strength based on fracture of the knot area is going to be f ultimate times a effective okay 58 if ultimate is 58 sorry for uh steel a 36 the ultimate is 58 not 50 as i mentioned before okay it is 58 times area effective already we have obtained it here so our pn is 104.7 okay remember here for yielding it was 90 okay 
However, here it is 1047. Without using the resistance factor, you are going to find that always, most, most commonly you are going to find that the gross area or the yielding is going to give less value. Because <clears throat> yielding of the gross section, less value in terms of nominal strength. However, when you are going to apply the strength or the resistance factor, 0.9 for yield and 0.75 for fracture, you're going to find that this 90 turns to be 81. And this 104, it is going to be 78, less than the gross, okay? Or less than the yielding limitation or limit state. So based on this, the design strength is the smaller value between the two. Then we're going to have 78.5 kips. Again, again, still our system or our element is going to be fractured at the net section rather than yielding along or across the gross area of the system okay now remember that what we need he is talking the service loads are uh, 35 and 15 for dead and live load respectively so investigate this member for compliance with ASIC specification in ASIC specification, we have the load combination. In the manual also, we have the load combination, right? So you are going to find that we need to calculate the load combination for LRFD and ASD. So we're going to, we are going to calculate uh, for both. Here we have dead load and live load. So when only dead load and live load are present, the only load combinations with a chance of controlling our combinations one and two right because we have in combination one it is only 1.4 dead and for combination two it is 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live right so when we calculate it based on the 35 and 15 dead load and live load respectively we're going to obtain combination one 49 combination two it is going to give us 66 skips so the second combination controls because it's higher. Remember that we're talking about combination. So the higher loading is going to be used. Okay. And there is a hint here that is important for you in general. When only dead load and live load are present, combination two will always control when the dead load is less than eight times the live load. This is common thing that you need to check always. That is, if the dead load is less than eight times live load then this load combination load combination two is going to be the controlling one so in the future okay examples we will not check combination one which is 1.4 dead when it's obviously does not control okay so from now on we are going to not to mention combination one if the dead load is less than eight times live load okay okay since P ultimate <clears throat> is less than uh, phi T P N. So our ultimate loading, which is 66 in this case, is less than our design strength, which is 78.5. Go back here. This is our design strength. So since this coming from loading less than design strength, so our member is satisfactory. Okay. This is satisfactory. Now let's go to the ASD for we remember that we we want to calculate for LRFD and ASD. So in this case for B for the ASD, we are going to calculate also yielding and fracture. So we are having here gross section. The allowable strength is going to be 90 over 1.67. From where this 90? It is calculated before. No need to recalculate it again. It is going to be the same for LRFD and ASD. Over the safety factor, 1.67, because we are dealing with exactly yielding. So it is 53.9. And for the net section, the allowable strength is going to be PN over phi or omega T. 104.7 over 2, it gives us 52. If we compare the two, we're going to find that still fracture is controlling. 52 is less than 53.9 the smaller value controls the allowable strength is 52.4 kips 
When the only loads are dead load and live load, ASD load combination tool will always control. So for our case, we need to calculate the load combination because we want to see whether that the strength of the element is okay or not. We found that for load combination related to ASD, it is going to be dead load plus live load. Okay, dead load plus, <coughs> sorry. So it is going to be dead load plus live load, which is 35 plus 15, it equals to 50 kips. Our design is 52.4, so we are in the safe side. We are less than the allowable, then the member is satisfactory. So the member is satisfactory. Okay. Now the alternative solution using allowable stress. Remember that we have mentioned this. We're we are going to use the allowable stress here, which is 0.6 if field and 0.5 if ultimate. Most of the engineers, they like to use this allowable stress directly. So for alternative solution using allowable stress for gross area, the applied stress is P ultimate over area gross. So this is the allowable stress for us. 50 over 2.5. Sorry, not not the allowable. This is the uh, the actual stress, which is P ultimate over area gross. If we're talking about the gross area, uh, as as far as gross area is concerned, so 50 over 2.5, it is going to give us 20 ksi, and the allowable stress is 0.6 f yield, as we have mentioned here, 0.6 f yield. So 0.6, 30 times 36, it gives us 21.6, which is larger than 20. So for this limit state, which is the limit state of what? Yes, excessive deformation. Small ft is less than large or capital case ft. The actual stress less than the allowable stress. Then we are okay. For the net section, now this is related to the yielding of the gross section. Now let's go to fracture of the net section ft is going to be 50 p actual over area effective area effective 1.8 it is different than area gross it is 0.85 of it as we mentioned so it is going to give us 27.7 ksi and in this case the allowable is going to be 0.5 if ultimate as we mentioned here this means that 0.5 times 58 it gives us 29 and it is larger than the actual stress, then we are okay and in the safe side. So for both cases, for ASD, for yielding of uh, gross section or fracture of the net section, we are okay, okay? Based on what? Based on this load combination, which is always controlling for the uh, ASD, which is dead load plus live load. So our section now, if we go back to the main example, we what we have done is we obtained the design strengths for LRFD based on two criteria, which is the uh, yield of the gross section and based on the ultimate or the fracture of the net section. And we did the same for the ASD based on two criteria, which is if ultimate also and if alt uh, if yield and if ultimate sorry here here is yield and we calculated for each case and for each case we were calculating what is the controlling uh, load combination for dead load or for LRFD we have two different dead load uh, two different load combination one related to 1.4 dead and the other is 1.2 dead plus 1.6 life we found that this one is going to be controlling always as long as the d is less than uh, eight times l okay so this means that our d uh, our case is always going to be this load combination for asd we found that it is always dead load plus live load is going to be the controlling load combination so we compared what we have obtained from the design strengths for LRFD with the loading coming from this load combination and we compared the allowable strengths coming from ASD with the dead load plus live plus live load uh, uh, loading and then we compare for all cases we found that our section 
is satisfactory means that it will not experience any kind of failure under these loads 35 and 15 but only for for uh, but if we are going to expect any type of failure for this building or oh, sorry for this element so we are con considering a kind of what fracture of the net area again whether it is based on LRFD or based on or based on the ASD okay it is fractured that is what what we are expecting but under these levels of dead load 35 and 15 our system our element or tension member is going to work well okay okay now let's go to the third maybe yes we have a comment here which is an important comment <clears throat> we can ask this question what is the difference in computational effort for the two different approaches so the answer is actually if you if we if we go back to this you're going to find that we almost did everything the same there is nothing that we have yeah, there is nothing that that we can say that LRFD is better than ASD and but what we have added here slight effort here is that we calculated the loading load combination by saying that it is 1.2 dead plus 1.6 life that's it but here in the ASD we only uh, like make the summation directly dead load plus live load so here maybe LRFD needs a slight more computational effort a very slight uh, computational effort and this is what is uh, mentioned here actually in this comment regardless of the method used the two nominal strengths must be computed that's right if a stress approach is used with ASD an equivalent computation must be made with LRFD the nominal strengths are multiplied by resistance factor with ASD the nominal strengths are divided by load factors they are the same up to this point the number of steps is the same the difference in effort between the two methods involves the load side of the relationships in LRFD the loads are factored before adding in ASD in most cases the loads are simply added therefore for tension members LRFD requires slightly more computation that's it okay this is uh, summarize what I have what we have noticed uh, during uh, our solution okay now let's go to the last example which is going to be example 3 and in this example we are going to have a different shape which is related to a double angle shape as you can see here with unequal angles okay with unequal angles and these two angles they are LLBB so long leg back to back so this means that the long leg as you can see there is longer or long leg and short leg so the longer legs are back to back connected so we call it LLBB means that uh, uh, it is long leg back to back the area used or the steel used here is A36 and the holes are for half inch diameter bolts and assume that AE equal to 0.75 the uh, net section so we are having like the relation between uh, the area fictive and area net here it is given for us later on we are going to get or calculate area effective okay first determine the design tensile strengths using LRFD second determine allowable strengths for ASD the cross section of this angle is there are two angles back to back as we said 5 by 3 times 5 sixteenth okay now the solution is from this figure okay <clears throat> as we said that the notation LLB means that long legs back to back however sometimes we use this uh, notation which is SLBB indicates short legs back to back when the short legs are uh, are connected back to back when double shape action is used two approaches are possible 
The first approach is consider a single shape and double everything. So we are going to follow this procedure that we are going to consider only one angle and we are going to multiply everything by two. The second approach is consider two shapes from the outset. Properties of the double angle shape are given in part one of the manual as, ha as we have explained before. In this example, we consider one angle and double the results, which is the approach number one. For one angle, the nominal strength based on the gross area is, so we're going to use the gross area approach now, I mean that the gross area criteria, yielding of gross area, so P nominal equals to F field times area gross as usual, 36 from the table 2.41 from the tables part 1, the dimensions of the angles. Then we can obtain 86.76 kips. There are two holes in each angle as you can see if we are going to have the net section here. We have like two holes here. So the net area of one angle is 2.41 which is the area gross minus 5 over 16 which is the bolt diameter times, uh, sorry this is the thickness, sorry this is the thickness of the angle times half plus 8. Half is the whole, the bolt diameter and one eighth it is the uh, tolerance and times 2 because we have two angles, right? We have sorry we have two bolts I'm sorry for this we have two bolts so this is this means that we have two bolts so the area is going to be the area between these uh, bolts and between these holes so the area area net is 2.019 inch squared the effective net area based on our example it is 0.75 given to us times this net area this means that we are we should use 1.514 so the effective net area is going to be 1.5 as you can see it is always less than the original or net area based on this our nominal strength based on the net area is going to be pn equal to f ultimate times area effective 58 from table 2-3 times area effective we have calculated then we are going to obtain 87.81 kips. Okay, so take care here. The nominal strength based on the area 87. The <clears throat> okay based on the net area, based on gross area, it was 86.76. So the design strength based on yielding of the gross area is going to be 0.9, the resistance factor for our case, which is phi times Pn, which is 86.76. And the design strength based on fracture, it is going to be 0.75 times 87.81. Here, this is the level of force where that excessive deformation will happen. Here, this is the level of force where fracture of the effective area is going to take place. Okay, so which one is less for us? this one this level which is fracture of the net area so because 50, 65 is less than 78 fracture of the net section controls and the design strength for the two angles is going to be two times the strength of one angle we said that we are going to use this approach we're going to use this approach which is calculating everything for one angle and then multiply at the end by two okay so this concludes actually the third example and this is the uh, the uh, this is re related sorry to uh, the uh, the first approach which is related to LRFD and then this is going to be the stress approach that already we have mentioned uh, before the allowable stress approach will be used for gross section as we have mentioned in the previous example 0.6 f yield so 0.6 times 36 21.6 and the corresponding allowable load is going to be ft times area gross 21.6 times 2.4 one already we have it from the tables so it is 52 and for the net section the allowable is 0.5 f ultimate so it is 29 
and the corresponding allowable load is going to be FT times area effective which is 29 times uh, 1.514 which is 43.9 okay so now we have this one is the allowable load okay for us based on the allowable stress this means that 43.9 is less than this 52.06 so fracture of the net section controls and the allowable strength for the two angles is two times the minimum here so it is going to be 87.8 okay so this is based on this concludes our our section here our uh, LRFD strength of the two angles is 132 kips here it is going to be 87.8 try to find the relation between 132 and 87.8 it is around 1.5 I guess so still we are in the same range of the relation between the safety factor and the resistance factor this concludes our video for today I have gone through three different examples to uh, show how we can uh, calculate the design uh, uh, the tensile strengths of tension members based on three different example uh, steel plate and single angle and double angle I hope that you have understood it and I hope that it will be beneficial for you thank you and see you in the next video